in this particular molecule, we've substituted it very similar to it, the way we did before, but here the bidentate ligand is very interesting in that instead of being red at each end and purple in the center, it is red at one end and yellow at the other end. So instead of representing something like ethylene diamine, where both of the ends are going to be uh, amines, in this case, we might have something like an amino acid, like the glycinato uh, ligand, which is a bidentate ligand, where we would have uh, an amine group at one end and we'd have a carboxyl group at the other, so the ends would be different. So if we look at the top, again, we have uh, our, let me check for our C5 rotation. So we can just show that quickly. We probably aren't going to be surprised about that. But again, we can use our cap. We rotate by a fifth of a turn, and we see that we have a C5 rotation. And if we did the other end, we would get exactly the same result, but with the yellow atoms. But this becomes a different point group because it's not a D group anymore because since this is red and this is yellow, there's no longer a C2 that would interchange these two positions. Therefore, this is an example of a group C5. Not C5V, not C5H, just C5. Because the presence of the bidentate ligand here, the purple things, uh, removes any of the mirrors. There are no dihedral mirrors, there's no horizontal mirrors, there's no vertical mirrors. There just are no mirrors. So this is an example of how we can convert the icosahedral group, IH, to one of its subgroups, C5. For this particular molecule, if we set it up in this manner, so it lays gently on one of its flat sides, we would notice the three blue atoms on top, and we might jump to the conclusion that this has a C3 axis. But we have to be careful. If we turn it very slightly, we actually see that we have four blues on top. We have one, two, three, four. And if we turn the molecule over, we also have four blues in a sort of diamond pattern. So this particular molecule has eight blues and four reds. So it doesn't have a C3 operation anymore. Uh, the high, we'll have to look to see what the high order rotation axis is. But we suspect that it might be a C2. We can take our cap here and have it lined up. So we can see that at the ends of each, we see that they're all blue. So if we do a C2 operation, so we pick this up, rotate it by a half a turn, we see that again, once we do that, all the atoms line up. This tells us that we have a C2 operation for this group. If we turn in the opposite direction, we turn clockwise, then we notice that we have c squared to the minus one. So the high, highest order rotation axis that we have for this particular molecule is a c2. Now also if we look at the side, we would also notice that for these red and blue atoms here, there's also a c2 axis. So there's also a c2 axis if we were to rotate it along this axis here, we would see that all the atoms line up as they were before. Now this reduces the symmetry down to the group D2H. So we can see that we have an example of the point group D2H using just this substitution pattern. This molecule is very similar to the previous one in that we have four blue atoms on one side arranged in a diamond sort of pattern, and we have four more on the other side. What is different about this particular molecule is in the previous one, at each of the other positions, we had four red atoms total. And in this particular example, we have one red, one purple, one green, and one brown. So we might suspect that we have a C2 operation. And if we just naively put our 
piece on top of here, we see that they all line up, and then we can rotate by C2, and they all line up. So we might immediately say, hey, we have a C2, and of course, we would be wrong, because we're not taking into account what happens with the other atoms. For example, in the previous case, when we did a C2, the atom at this position would rotate over to here, which worked perfectly well when they were both red. But now, this is purple, and this is brown, so when we do a C2 rotation, it would take this purple into brown, which isn't the same, which tells us we no longer have our C2 high order rotation axis. And in fact, what we do have is, along this section here, the purple, the red, the green, and the brown, that is the mirror plane. We actually have a mirror plane, which reflects this blue uh, diamond at the top into an equivalent blue diamond at the bottom. So the only symmetry operation that this particular molecule has is a mirror plane. So because that's true, this belongs to the point group CS. And it points out the importance of not only checking the most obvious atoms to make sure that they move the way that we imagine they are, but imagine, to make, to verify that all the atoms move into an equivalent position when we do the C2, C3, C4, C5 operations. So this goes all the way down to point group CS. Last but not least, we have this particular substitution pattern, and we have six different types of atoms. We have red, we have purple, blue, green, gray, and yellow. And they're not arranged randomly. They're arranged in such a way that, for example, we can see we have green on this side, and then green on the other side, and they're connected by the stick with the little dot in the center. So this suggests that we might have a center of inversion, and it seems to work at least for the green atoms. But if we went throughout the entire molecule, we'd notice that yellow would go to yellow, purple would go to purple, green goes to green, blue goes to blue, and gray goes to gray. So the only symmetry operation in this particular molecule is inversion. So this molecule belongs to the point group CI. We would be able to recognize this particular arrangement as opposed to any sort of random arrangement of the same atoms in that, remember, we can tell by vibrational spectroscopy centrosymmetric molecules because bands will appear either in IR or Raman, but not both. So we have not gone through all 22 of the subgroups because I don't think anyone would have the patience to sit through all of those, but we've seen 11 of the subgroups. Will the buckyball get out of this alive, or will it be hassled by the other point groups? And what about Mary Lou?